name is Ted Gardner, and I'm an interviewer for the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. Today I'm interviewing First Lieutenant Harry Slater, and this is the 21st of September 2006 at the main library. Uh, our camera operator today is Dennis Daly, and uh, always ready, capable, and able. And, uh, uh, also present today uh, are relatives of Harry, uh, for which we're very grateful. And uh, Harry, uh, just briefly getting to know you and getting to getting acquainted with uh, a salty character such as you are, <laughs> it's really a, a privilege. And uh, and reading about your your background uh, in the Air Force, uh, when when did you enter the Air Force? Was it then the Air Corps or was it the Air Force? It was the Air Corps. Yeah. And uh, it was, I went through a uh, training, uh, not a training program, but an interviews with a number of uh, places and was finally uh, told that I would go into the Air Force. Mm -hmm. and where that was at this time. Well, with your extensive service, it must have been fairly early in the war. Yes. It yeah. Was, it, was, uh, it happened. Uh, I was in school in Lexington, Transylvania University. Oh, yes. And he uh, came out of a movie one Sunday, and there was Pearl Harbor story. Yeah. And I got home to the dormitory and there was a message for me to call home. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, don't do anything <laughs> until you talk to us. <laughs> so I went back, in fact, I quit school and went back home and stayed there for week or two and finally went up to Dayton, Ohio mm -hmm. and enlisted in the Air Force. Now that procedure was nothing more than getting you started right. because then he sent you home and said, don't call us, we'll call you. Exactly. And eventually they gave me a notification to report to Dayton and I was inducted into the Air Force and began the training program. And the uh, testing I had done, they put me in. That's where you're afraid what they're going to do. Right. You may have to be a bombardier. Sure. And so you, you had your pre flight yeah. training there, yeah. and uh, yes. they determined that you could be a, uh, a jockey, yes. <laughs> an airplane yes. jockey. Yes. And so my uh, training and got, uh, I think they gave you five or six day leave. And right. And then you started your... Uh, started your flight training, yeah. primary training. Um, let's go back a little bit and give, you, give our, uh, our audience an idea about you yourself. Um, uh, you grew up in Erlanger, Kentucky? Yes. Isn't that something? And from there, then, you went through Erlanger High, or what? Yeah, I graduated from Lloyd High School. In Lloyd Erlanger. High School, okay. And, uh, and then you went to Transylvania yes, and Lexington. Yes. How about that? And I, uh, actually, I hoped to uh, go to college and play athletics in sure. college. Sure. And uh, I played football. Well, that was a good start in life. I know. So it's, but I think it restricted my high school uh -huh. well, education. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I was more 
concentrated on that. Yes, I know what you mean. Well, that's uh, that, that's very interesting. And then, uh, uh, of course, um, after your after your pre-flight, was that it? Was that it, right, Pat? Was that at Dayton? Uh, yes, I went to Dayton. We were sent. You re report to Dayton, and then you take all these. Uh, Testing. Yes. And they decided at that time that I could be a pilot. Good. Not a bombardier. Or Wonderful. A navigator. Right. <clears throat> and uh, then they send you to the school. And I, well, it just was almost all over the United States, it seems like. Mm -hmm. I was in Tennessee, I was in Florida for quite some time. Then I went to uh, Yuma, Arizona, and then back into Texas, and uh, finished up. All right. There. So for a boy from Merlinger, Kentucky, that was a great experience, wasn't it? it was Going all parts of the country and everything, I know how you feel about that. Well, that's just wonderful. So when uh, uh, you first went overseas um, uh, in, in uh, Early 45. I believe that's what yeah, because it says here that your uh, uh, your service started in uh, early November of 43. Oh, I'm sorry. So it would be early 44. Right. Exactly. And uh, uh, what kind of a plane did you fly? Well, in training, I had mean, flown a P40. Uh huh. Uh, you got about 10 hours in the last part of your training. That was a hot plane. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it had been through all that war in China. Right, and you, but before that, your trainer was an AT6, wasn't well, it? Was the Texans? Yeah. Right. And uh, <clears throat> that was the final plane. That's where you finished up. And uh, then you sort of sweat out where they were going to send you. Right. And I was fortunate enough to get in what I wanted to do with fighters. And I uh, finished with my training there in about, a, I think that's a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, they give you three months. And, and, uh, and send you overseas. Yeah. Well, it actually is very close to that. Yeah. They sent me to England. Went to England, right? Yeah, I went over <laughs> on a boat. Uh huh. The Ile de France. Oh boy, famous ship. Yeah, yeah. And he came back on the. Uh, can't think of the other one came back, but they both were very uh, eloquent. Yes. All big passenger liners. Right. <clears throat> yeah, those were very. Uh, those were very prominent in transatlantic. Uh, transporting of troops and uh, personnel. Uh, uh, so you first landed in England, and uh, you went to Duxford. Is that where you went to the air base there? They me to Duxford, and there were about I guess about forty of us in that group, mm -hmm. almost a whole contingent, right. because they had been in the early part of the United States involvement, the, those people who were the early pilots yes. were uh, really beaten up pretty bad. Yes. And they had, uh, that's why we came in a big group of yes. replacements. Right. Um, that, that base and, and your being in a foreign country, of course you all spoke English, but it, it, it was sort of a, an introduction to a, a different area, a different way of life, a mindset of the people and so forth. Did they welcome you, Yanks? Oh yes, they were thrilled to death. Yes. Because <laughs> we were helping. You were there to help them, absolutely. <laughs> they were in desperate need. Yes, they were. <laughs> Duck's group had been a very prominent uh, Air Force. For the Royal Air Force. Air Force. Yeah. yeah. And 
so they turned it over to the United States as they did in a number of locations at that point. Now, did they fly, uh, did fly bombers out of Duxford? No. Strictly yeah, fighters? Just fighters. That was a fighter, yeah. fighter base. And we were in a field. Our takeoff position was <coughs> uh, four abreast. Yeah. And then four abreast here. Uh -huh. And you'd all eight take off wow. down that wide. There are no runways. Right, it's right. It's right. field. And you take off all together. And then you did the little uh, moving over to the other side sure. where you should be in the formation. Right. You knew your position. And that was always, uh, there were a <laughs> couple of uh, turnovers. I'm sure. Rather trenches. Yeah. And then you, when you returned, you had to get on the ground quickly because that's where the France was just across the bridge. <laughs> right. And so when you came back, you didn't. You didn't circle the field or anything. You came in directly. Yeah. And you'd come in and do a like a half a loop uh -huh. and come down and land it hit the ground, and then you start working on the brakes. Sure. Real quickly. And then getting out of the way, because yeah. people were following you in too, weren't they? Well, now that's interesting. I didn't realize. I'm an old Navy man. <laughs> and, uh, so you, uh, the eight planes, now this, this was sort of, did they call that a wing or something, part yeah, of the yes, squadron? Yes, they were. Yeah, squadron. Yeah. There were four and four. Yes. And they would, in that grass field and where we were, we would take off eight planes at a time. Yes. Not right uh, in top of each other, right. not right close to each other. Take off. Wow. And uh, it was. Uh, it could be pretty dicey, nice, couldn't yeah, it? One of them went, I can remember one of them that went completely uh, yeah. over, just. Right. Knocked over. Now, uh, was, was your mission to escort bombers? Both. We escorted bombers, and that was really uh, not the fun part of it. Right. Because you're, uh, yeah. it's, it is an aggression. You know, you're just going along for the ride. Yeah. And to protect them. And but you're stuck with us. that, with and that you, group of bombers. You yeah. stay with them. And if they uh, were attacked, you had to run them off. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, uh, now the bombers were what, B-17s? 17s and... 24s? Right, Liberators and Flying Fortresses. Well, uh, then uh, your mission uh, at that time was to fly over Germany? Yes. yes. Well, to Germany. Germany owned France at that time. Yes. And we would, any airfield was. Was a, yeah. was a target. And cars on the road. If you saw automobiles or trucks on the road, if they had gasoline, the Germans had given it to them because sure. they were, France was Germans. They yes. Had, they owned it. Right. And so uh, we just uh, hit it all. I should say, um, the uh, time in the air. Do you remember how much, how much time you were in the air from when you took off from Duxford and, and returned? Was it? Oh, you would be four or five. Four hours. or five hours. <clears throat> Where you were going? That's a long time, and uh, <clears throat> of course you had to have adequate fuel to get there and get back. Right, wing tanks and, and yeah. yeah. And of course, if you had the bombs, you'd have that on your thing too. And it's you carried light bombs or did, yeah, were we they? We carried 500s. 500 pounders yeah. on a fighter plane. Wow. I think it was. Yeah. That was my recollection. Yeah. Well, um, and then you had what, 50 caliber uh, machine guns? Yes. Yeah. 
So, uh, you know, that was a wonderful thing. Uh, uh, the U.S. Air Force planes were pretty strongly built, and you, uh, as far as uh, as protection and so forth, of course, uh, that was very important. And at the same time, you know, you couldn't be built like a tank because you had to go fast and high. So it was a kind of a, a thin line there of protection and speed and maneuverability. The uh, airplane is, uh, I guess, of all 
that sort of thing, just what you're talking about. Having uh, combat cameras in the plane, you know that that's a remarkable thing in itself. Uh, to be able to have that, because uh, of course uh, uh, previous wars we didn't have that capability, um, and and then we've all seen the we've all seen the action pictures of our air force at war and uh, the maneuvering, the aerobatics, and the enemies coming in and and the firing and the shooting downs and so forth. Um, did you ever land in, in France or Germany? No, no. I was going to because at that, when I was nearing the, the, the end of my uh, tour of duty, sure. I thought, hell, on the way back, I'll just Say I run ashore on gas. Yeah. And drive down someplace and see what what's going on in France. Right. And I never got to do it. Never got to do it. Well, I see. Um, uh, I see your your tour of duty there ended uh, in August of '45, and of course we all know what happened before that. Uh, the sixth and seventh of August, when the uh, the atom bombs were dropped on. Uh, on Japanese soil, and of course that changed everything because had you been thinking ahead that you might have to go to the Pacific? Well, yes. In fact, <clears throat> when I finished tour and came back to the United States, I went to some place up in the Midwest, I can't even remember where it was now, and uh, was training there for be sent to Japan. Yeah. And of course, before it, uh, I, thank goodness you didn't have to go over yeah, there. That's it was you're dealing with some people who were just oh. treacherous. Oh, oh, yeah. Relief. That that's right, and uh, I know that um, uh, so many of the fellows so concerned about that, who'd been in Europe and then came home, and then to think about having to go out again, particularly as you say, you know, that very treacherous part of the world. Uh, well, how about your family? How did your, how did your parents react to all this? My father died. During the war? Before that war. Oh, before? Yeah, just, he uh, was uh, an internal revenue. Here in Cincinnati? Yes, in Northern Kentucky. Kentucky. <clears throat> and uh, I. Uh, he, uh, so he didn't get to know about your service. How about your mother? Oh, she lived through it. She's a tough woman. And yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so she, she was. And she finished raising us, taught uh, school, and uh, had a little, finally had a business. Well, how about that? Well, now, did you have uh, brothers and sisters? Had a sister. Had a sister. Isn't that interesting? She was married to a real hero. Oh, really? My sister, she was married after the war. Yes. So she's not that big. He uh, was uh, an infantryman and uh, fought in England. Fought in, in yeah. Europe, huh? Yeah. Was he in uh, Was he in the Battle of the Bulge or anything like that? Do you know? Yeah, I think that's where he was. Uh, he was captured. Oh my goodness! He was a prisoner of war. Right. Hell of a guy. And uh, he, uh, he was captured at the Battle of the Bulge at Beefsburg. But he survived that. Yeah. So you two had, did I you have him? I didn't know him at that You time. didn't know him at that time. He came back and went to the University of Kentucky where my sister had oh, yeah. gone to school and How about that? got married. But you got to meet him. Oh yeah. Oh I yeah. I see him today. He had a visit with him and he was. He's still, he's still around, is he? Yes. Isn't that something? So the two of you got together. Oh, I think that's wonderful because uh, uh, so many times, you know, we're, uh, when the 
war would, you know, there was an attitude uh, in those days, I know I felt it myself a bit, uh, boy, the war is over, thank goodness, I'm going home. And uh, can't wait to get home, can't wait to get back. And, uh, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, maybe two, three years with a group of people, and then all of a sudden you're separated, many of whom you never see again. Well, there are a lot of, <coughs> there were a lot, of, <coughs> I don't know whether they're still going in now, but they were have conventions. And reunions. Yeah, reunions, and, uh, and I don't know what their dialogue was in yeah. these reunions, yeah. but uh, it was uh, surprising to Do you me. have any connection with anybody left? No. No. I know, well, it's, it's, it's pretty tough Just thing. Just brother <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, thank goodness that that is very uh, wonderful that you have him, and your sister is still living. Yes. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Well, um, that you know the families here at home were uh, obviously were so concerned, uh, but in those days the whole nation was involved, whether they were in the war industries or they were supporting their their service men and women, uh, family members, you know, spiritually writing letters, praying, doing all that good stuff. And their lifestyle had been changed dramatically. Exactly. From what it was. Exactly. Right. We were, you know, before that, we were really almost an isolationist nation. We thought that we had a big ocean on each side of us and nobody was going to harm us. We didn't want to get involved. Well, that, as we all know, that changed very rapidly. And you're a living example, Harry. Uh, and we're all so proud to know about you. Uh, and getting acquainted with you has been so important. But for people to realize today, and I think this is one of the great things about this Library of Congress program, which our, our public library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County is, is able to conduct and the fact that that you're going to be on film uh, your words are going to be heard and they'll be on file and uh, and you can continue it's very important and you're such an important person and I'm so glad that uh, not only that you survived <laughs> but also that uh, I had the opportunity to meet you and uh, do you think of anything else you'd like to tell us? No, I think it's, I just think that it's, you know, when you cut kind of, the whole end of, the, <coughs> of this <coughs> era, is that we're still thinking about war. True, true. There ought to be some way that we get smart enough to figure out, it's easier to shoot somebody in the butt than it is to kill them. It is. It's, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly. We all, we all pray for, for world peace and, uh, and uh, eternal peace, as a matter of fact. Uh, sadly enough, uh, uh, I guess it's just human nature, and unfortunately, there's always going to be somebody, it seems, that, that wants what you have or wants what somebody else has. And, but uh, God bless you, Harry, and, and uh, uh, we thank you warmly for your great service. Uh, wish you long life and good health, and uh, uh, it's just great. And I hope we get together again. Now that I know where you live, I live about five minutes from you, and, that, you know, and that's another thing before we end this, that is so, uh, I'm finding out, I'm finding people that uh, Dennis Daly and his crowd here at the library have uncovered, and you know, somebody lives ten minutes from me that I never had any idea about, and here you are five minutes from my house, and uh, I hope we can get together again sometime. 
We will have lunch and talk things over. Sounds good. It's really wonderful. Thank you again, Harry. You've heard uh, uh, from a wonderful, wonderful man, Harry Slater, who uh, was a first lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force, uh, served with great honor, was wounded, uh, came back, survived, lived a good life in Cincinnati, and uh, we thank you again, Harry, for, for this time. And Dennis, we'll turn it back to you.